So it's been a long time that I haven't uploaded on YouTube and uh, I got a lot of footage um, to show you. So I'm just gonna throw them all here and let you watch while I talk about some things that I've been thinking for the past few months instead of just explaining what I'm doing. If that's okay with you and you have no choice because, well, you're here now. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that awkward laugh of um, it's been so long that I feel awkward being here and having to talk but <laughs> oh wow I really miss making videos to be honest I took some time as you could tell <laughs> I was reevaluating the way I was living my days and I chose to stay away from a few things while I organized my head and YouTube was definitely one of them but it's not a sad thing, it's actually something good to practice. Something I think I never really practiced. Like uh, taking time to reevaluate things and prioritize things. Actually, I don't think I never did it. I just think we don't do it as often as we could. But uh, I guess the learning starts from there already. <laughs> well, speaking about YouTube. I think the world kind of tells us that our habits are only valid if they're almost perfectly consistent in a way. Like, do you do it every day or six out of seven days? If not, then it's not a habit, like it's not a valid thing. Or at least that's what we end up believing in anyway. Do you feel that too? <laughs> believing this ideals doesn't really serve us, it's, it really does not motivate me in any way. And speaking about YouTube or like the fact that I took some time off and how the world sees it as not valid anymore just because you haven't done it in so long. But I never thought about it like that. To me, it was only a matter of, so what should I focus on right now? It doesn't matter what you're not doing because if you feel good again, then you will eventually, eventually pick up the things that you were you kind of paused on and it shouldn't be a big deal like it shouldn't we shouldn't make it mean something else other than just that and i know it sounds really obvious when i put it like that but generally if you think about it we just feel really guilty for pausing something this way of like all or nothing like either you are doing it perfectly or not only makes me think my habits are just good when i'm on top of my game which is such a distorted view of life. Nothing in nature works the same way all the time. Like, why would we? It doesn't make any sense. But we kind of perpetuate that story as a society, or at least in this culture that we live in. We have to be constantly pushing beyond our own limits, like our own feelings and what our body asks us. In the art community, for example, just the fact that we name something as art block it's just us expecting our brains and our body to work for our art, like a machine, 100% of the time. When really, your body or mind is just asking for a break. But we have to label it somehow, instead of just listening to it. So now I don't really mind being wonky with my habits as much as they develop, at least. I think it's very pretty to allow them to just be whatever they are right now, like currently. I think some habits come, serve a certain purpose, and we don't need to overthink the longevity of it all, you know? It could be writing, painting, reading, even hiking or making videos. <laughs> we think too much sometimes of the habit itself, and I believe we should focus on how it makes us feel. If it makes us feel good when we do it imperfectly, isn't that the true, pure purpose of it? The joy of it? Well, that's exactly what I've been trying to do. Trying to notice my habits, change them slowly, think less, few more. It really doesn't matter if I don't understand everything about what, what I'm going through. I don't really have to trace everything back to a series of events to explain everything or to explain the reasons why it happened or trace it back to something in my childhood that could explain my patterns and things like that. I think those um, stages are very powerful, but 
power can also be overused. So letting go of the phantom of over-intellectualizing everything in my life has been very liberating. Trying to rationalize things too much becomes a habit that can be quite debilitating. It's like we're digging a hole and thinking we're having fun with it, <laughs> only to realize later on that the fun is outside in the actual real world, you know? And it's weird because we don't really realize that we're doing it, that we're digging this hole. It's only when the hole is like long enough that we look up and we see ourselves trapped that we're like, oh, okay, so what do I do now? Do I keep digging so I can maybe find my way out or do I just try to crawl back into the surface? But I don't mean to get like dark and deep. I just think that the good thing is we can change. We can always change. In fact, our brains remain plastic until the day we die. And it super makes sense. We should be able to adapt to better ways of living until our last breath. And nature is super wise to give us this right. It's so beautiful when we think about it. <laughs> I've been enjoying lots of relaxing things lately. Actually, I've been discovering what makes me relax. And I can take you along this peaceful ride. <laughs> so I'll give you an example of one of those habits that I'm trying to shape into something else. So it's not really talk, talk, talk. <laughs> I loved crafting newsletters for my lovely readers. And, you know, filling it with art content, useful tips, freebies, and interesting articles. All related to art making. Or improving a small business if you have one. And working more efficiently. Like, uh, how to draw motivation from something else other than inspiration only. And on Instagram, I never really share much of my personal life because I like living it without thinking about posting or monetizing my life, you know? <laughs> Here on YouTube, I thought I wanted to only show my work life um, to talk about work and found quite boring to watch people doing other things like cooking and making coffee or I don't know what else but I didn't really think about it consciously but I always got a little bit bored when people do too much in in a video that it's not related to art so I wanted to make my videos in a way that it wouldn't be boring for myself to watch if I were to watch them and well this very narrowed focus got me caught up in the world of numbers too much, like tracking things, analyzing things, comparing things, metrics, demographics, schedules, work, work, work. It doesn't take a scientist to guess the result of taking that path, right? It was like I only found it interesting um, to think and talk about work, even though it was not a conscious thing, but I, that's where my interest was. And I was kind of shaping my days and my hours and my months into consuming those kind of contents and thinking about work too much. And suddenly my whole routine was just work, work, work. And I didn't even realize it because as artists, sometimes it can be very challenging to separate what we like to do to what is our job because they it's just blurry, right? I think we all know that because we feel good doing the things that also make us money so it could get quite entangled and that's a good thing because well you enjoy what you're doing but that's also a bad thing because you can get out of balance very quickly and not even realize it and the way that happened to me was i didn't even notice it coming but also i could notice because i didn't have any ways of relaxing like, I, I just wasn't doing much more to take care of myself and, and my mind other than focusing on the things that I'd like to do. And sometimes it's exactly the opposite. It's about not doing. Sometimes it's just about existing, you know? Not doing something that is productive, not doing something that is effective, not doing something that is, like, useful in the, weird, in the way that society s sees. And just like relaxing things that don't really mean much to society, but means a lot to your body and to your mental health. Things that are not useful, like taking care of yourself as in 
you know, moisturizing your skin or doing your nails, not things that make you look a certain way or make you spend time with your image, but things that really make you stop and just exist as a human being, just, just be. <laughs> you know, things like truly just taking yourself out for a long walk or, or a short walk, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> But just like noticing your surroundings and just being with nature and just relaxing in a way that you're not performing in action, you're just existing. <laughs> As you can imagine, if you're so used to acting, acting and working and doing things, it could be quite challenging to find um, like useless, air quotes, useless things to do. Um, just because we're so conditioned to be thinking about um, how we're using our times and to be thinking about time as this, you know, the whole time is money thing is already so messed up. Like, it's not. It's really not. Time is just a concept and money is also uh, something that is quite a concept as well. Like, it doesn't mean a lot outside of our society. So, it's not something that we really uh, depend on our lives on ah it's so hard to talk about money because of course we depend on money to buy things that we need to live but i just mean it in a more generic sense that we don't need money to breathe and to okay i, I know i don't need to go that detailed but i i just don't think money is evil but i also don't think money is a solution to everything and this gets repeated a lot that money is not the reason for everything but in our minds, every day, we're constantly thinking about money, about uh, how much to spend, about how much we can afford, about how, about how much more we need or we would like to have. So it's not that we just accept that money is not everything. We're constantly thinking about it, which means that it's not as easy as just repeating something. Society and, and the world kind of hammers that into our minds so it doesn't really matter if we get a one good positive thought about money saying that it's not everything but then the rest of for the rest of the day we just keep hearing how we need this or that or we we would be happier if we bought this or that so it gets a little bit more complex than just repeating um some thoughts to yourself because you're not alone in the world. You're not alone. Even if you work by yourself, um, just the fact that we have social media and uh, are, we are constantly being shown information and content from different people and from different sources, just that alone makes us um, very susceptible to ideas from other people and suggestions from other people. And that's where doing nothing comes along. Because we cannot really do the things that we enjoy or take care of our physical health or pretty much anything if, we're, if our minds are constantly fed up with like too much information, too much content, too much stuff all the time. There is a mental space that we need in order to do things that even the things that we enjoy doing. Most of the time we just tell ourselves that we are lacking focus or motivation or we don't know how to do this or that or we feel lost. But in reality, we're just overwhelmed mentally and we don't even realize it anymore. I just did like a huge restock. Like there is a huge pile. <laughs> then I got some miscuts that are slightly, slightly offset. Like for example, let me show you. Okay, this one I close like I cut super close to the border, and I really don't like that. But the stickers are perfect. Also, something else like this one has just one tiny sticker that it cut off to the point that it's really like weird. Wait, ah, focus. So this one is like almost cut in the corner right here but still like all of the others are okay-ish eh. <laughs> but still like I don't want to throw away because it's still very usable 
and some others that I had with like a previous sticker paper that I used to use from online labels which is like this matte sticker paper that I don't use anymore so I'm I just decided that I'm gonna make like a little grab bag like a mystery bag with those misprints and sell them at like a very discounted price like maybe a third of the price half the price, a third of the price, depending on what I'm going to put in each one. But I also have like fun previous stuff that I did for my Patreon, like for example this one for March. This is the part of the bundle for March and I have a few, like I have three of these and a few of these left that I won't be using for anything else. So I thought it would be a fun idea not to like waste them and still you get to have like a random mystery thingies. So yeah, I'm gonna, I don't know, just, just like make a little sticker for the package and then just make it kind of cute. And yeah, that's it. Let's do it. <laughs> So yeah, I'm kind of rethinking and reshaping the way I share stuff on the internet to be less of work, work, work like I used to be. Um, more like life, life, life. <laughs> As professionals, we're constantly being shown a better way to do things. And from seeing tips and advice on social media all the time, I slowly led myself to believe that that type of sharing things should be you know, quick because people don't have that much of an attention span anymore or it had to be funny or highly entertaining because that's what people like to consume on the internet or that somehow it had to be relatable because that's how it goes trendy and viral and successful but the thing is, it really doesn't <laughs> it doesn't have to be anything specifically it just has to be <laughs> It will be whatever you want and whatever shape you make it into because that's what it is to be human, you know? Maybe a few of your friends do prefer when it's funny and fast-paced, but I'm sure there will be others that will enjoy a calmer, slower way of being presented with information. Not only because we're different in our personality and tastes, but because we go through different phases in our lives where we would like to consume things in a different style um, just to go along with those moods and that's the beauty of having all kinds of content instead of thinking it's a competition and we have to be better it's truly not about being better it's just about being in touch with whatever you're going through currently and expressing that so that someone else might feel less alone and that's our beauty as a community or connecting to other human beings, right? As a creator, you don't really have to create anything in a specific way. The focus could be on having a deep desire to grow, learn, and be curious about becoming a better version of yourself. Following your own rhythms, your own life, because it, it will match whatever your soul craves the, in those moments. It will always be aligned with your inner self. And there are no rules on that. I feel like it was a bit difficult for me to articulate so many thoughts and so many things that I've been thinking about um, these past few months in my whole life. Uh, and it's really <laughs> hard to condense it in a 20 minute video, even if it's 20 minutes. But um, thank you so much for being here and for listening and, and watching. And I guess I'll be better at unpacking my thoughts and my things. My things. What? I'm not moving out or anything. But <laughs> I'll just be able to explain it in more details with better examples in the next videos. So thank you so much for being here. <laughs> thank you so much for being here. And I'll see you on the next video. Bye. <laughs>